through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. He sits for the living. in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed is Psalm 118 found on page 625 of your prayer book. We will read verses 1 to 2, 14 to 24. This will be done alternately and will pause us at each asterisk. The refrain for number 845 from your hymnal will be done at the start, after verse 17, and at the end. Psalm 119. So we'll begin with the refrain.
endures forever.
whether then it was I or they. So we proclaim, and so you have come to believe the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The graduate hymn, number 175, Jesus Lives, the Terrorist Now. Also went in, and 
we saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their boats. When Mary had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried it away, tell me where you have laid it, and I'll take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not go down to me. Because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. May the Nazarene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, O Lord.
So to think that somebody stole the body was not far-fetched. She runs to tell Peter and the other disciples. And two of them go to the tomb to verify if this is true. It is still dark when Peter and the other disciples reach there. And this darkness is not only that the sun hasn't come up yet. But their souls are in the dark. Their spirits are in a dark place. Jesus is there. In John's resurrection account, the disciples, seeing the empty tomb, go back home. They do nothing. So Mark wasn't so wrong, I believe, when he says they were gripped with terror and amazement. They went to their homes and told no one. John clearly says they went home. There was no walk on the road to Emmaus to explain what had happened. There was no good news to tell as yet. They were still at the end. John says the other disciple believed. It says he kind of understood about the resurrection. What next? hasn't crossed their minds. They're still distraught. It is finished. Everything that they knew has come to an end. Mary comes back to the tomb after them and hands around. And Jesus uses this opportunity to make himself known. Jesus approaches Mary and asks, why are you weeping? And he asks that twice. I don't believe Jesus was thinking, but at least Mary should have understood it. The first time she must have said, why is this man bothering me? Jesus is dead. Nothing else matters now. The second time, Jesus asks, who do you see? This causes Mary to stop and explain that Jesus is dead and they have moved his body and she can't bear the pain of not knowing where it is laid. This is the end. She, like the disciples, do not expect anything spectacular to happen. They are all asking themselves, what else? How do we get on with life without Jesus? If we only had John's account, we would understand that the disciples were told to stick together. They were to look out for each other. They were to love each other. And somewhere before in John, chapter 14, because I know you are going to get from your things. John implied that Jesus had told them he would send a comforter. He said he would send the spirit of truth. But in this dark time, they don't remember that. They are still at home. So Easter, the end meets the beginning. In the darkness of having lost their leader, in the uncertainty of 
what do we do next? Mary reacts in the only way she knows how to express her grief. She cries. But Jesus comes to Mary and calls her by name and tells her what next. Her what next is that she is to go and tell others. For us today, the question, why do you weep, is still relevant. Who are you looking for is still relevant. What happens next is still relevant. We are no different from Mary when uncertainties come our way. When the what next isn't clear, we cry, we mope, we become pensive, maybe even distraught. But for most of us, something else happens. The end needs to begin. For Mary, the beginning was go and tell. And Jesus comes to us just as he did in the garden with Mary. And he calls each of us by name. He not only calls each of us by name, he tells us what next to do, just as he told Mary what should happen next. For her, she should go and tell the other disciples. I cannot tell you what Jesus is calling each of you to do. Let me rephrase that. I cannot tell you what Jesus or how Jesus is telling you to go and tell. But I know that Jesus is speaking to each of us today in the darkness of our souls, in the uncertainties we have within us, in the what next of our lives. Jesus is there asking, who do you seek? What is it you want? How can I help you in this time? And like Mary, our answer may be just to meet our immediate needs. Money to buy food, a new car, children to go to school, a better home relationship, a sick relative to be healed. Some of us just need companionship. Somebody to love us. May they just be able to relax for once. But for Jesus, what next is not only about satisfying our immediate need. It is also about alleviating the needs of others. Mary knew the risen Jesus. She met him in the garden. It was now her turn to go and tell the other disciples. She was now to put them at ease. She was to assure them that something else was about to happen. The end had met the beginning. Jesus, in sending Mary to go and tell, tells us that while our immediate needs must be met, while we are seeing a glimmer of light in the darkness, we are called to share that glimmer of light that we are seeing. The human condition is the same with everybody. We all have needs. The needs 
may differ from person to person. But there is more to life than just knowing where a dead body is laid to rest. Were we in their disposition, we too may have felt that we didn't need to know anything more. Because this is the end. This will complete us. This is what will bring satisfaction to Mary, knowing where Jesus is living. But Jesus says to me, there is more to this than me dying. There is more to you than fulfilling a need. There is more to life than darkness. And that's when the beginning happens. Jesus calls us and says, go and do. Mary was overjoyed by seeing Jesus. She wanted to touch him, but that wasn't to be. Having met the risen Savior, she was now to go and share the good news. The end met the beginning, not only in the joy of seeing Jesus, but also in her being sent. In Jesus sending Mary, her what next was answered. She doesn't quite get it, but her uncertainty is alleviated and her next step is shown to her. Is your what next being answered? Are you uncertain of what will happen? Do you believe that there is nothing else out there for you? You have accomplished all there is to be accomplished. There is nothing else. I'm always amused by the older folk who tell me, when I was young I did that and I used to do that and I used to do that. Way. And they rest on their laws. Not just that. They put down what they used to do because it's your time. Some of them do not even value those who are coming behind. Which I believe is what they are being called to do in the evening of their days. So Jesus says to all of us, go and tell others. Tell them what you have seen, what you have done, so that they may see and do too. Do not keep your good news to yourself. Does the service to Mary, but the whole Gospel of John implies that this is done in love and out of love for Jesus and your fellow beings. Yes, we don't quite get it. We don't quite understand. All we know is that Jesus is calling each of us by name. We are all able to hear him calling to us. There is no ambiguity except our self -doubt. Jesus calls us saying what we are to do. Jesus provides the answer of all what's next. Who or what we are seeking changes with time because the 
curiosity in us is never quite satisfied. And very few of us are content with a simple life. Most of us have questions of how come and what is going to happen next. It's not a question that anyone can answer for you with certainty. What we do know is that Jesus provides for you. He says, go and tell. And in telling, the what next will come. And when you think that this first step has ended, another what next is presented, and Jesus will continue to point to you. The passage says, the other disciple believed. And I understand that to me, he had an understanding of what was happening. He too was uncertain. But he believed that Jesus was risen and he was expectant of the new beginning. Easter and the resurrection story that it tells says whatever we believe has come to a close and a new beginning shines. It isn't always as we see it. And our task is not like Mary. We must go into the communities, into the world, to the grave sites, to the situations where there seems to be no hope, to the desolate gardens with the intention of redeeming the situation. Making miracles happen. And let us be clear, Mary and the disciples did not go back to the same life they had before Jesus died. So our what's next, our going and telling, does not restore life to what it was before. But to a change that is better. It is to tend what is broken. To answer the question, who or what do you see? And as we go and tell, strange things will happen. Others will begin to notice. Others will begin to do the same, and in their own way, they too will go and tell. So today, when the end meets the beginning, we are challenged, even in our small gestures, to tell. We are called to shine the Easter light into difficult and dark situations. Our choice must always be to seek, to hope, to make new beginnings of every desperate situation, trusting that Jesus leads me. Like Mary in the garden, our determination must be to tell others. And for us, we do so in the way we live and as Jesus lives. May we have the courage to not allow the difficulties to overwhelm us, but to always find a new beginning in what seems like here. Amen.
gave to your children new life through the water of baptism. Grant that these children raised to new life in Christ may serve you in faith and in love and may grow into the full stature of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
and united our lives with yours. Surround these children with your love. Protect them from evil. Sustain and guide them by your Holy Spirit and receive them into the family of your church that they may walk with us in the way of Christ and grow in the knowledge of your love. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of water. Over it, your Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of bondage of Egypt. In it, your Son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit, fulfilling his ministry by the offering of himself on the cross, blood and water flowed from his side. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because you have anointed, appointed the water of baptism for the regeneration of all people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, in joyful obedience to him, we make disciples of all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now therefore sanctify this water. By the same Holy Spirit and grant that all who are baptized may be united with Christ. Forgive me, set free from the bondage of sin, and raised with Christ to eternal life. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
sekali. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
also with you. We are on page 126 of the Book of the Common, the Book of Common Prayer. For me, the presentation of the African. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us. This bread, this bread, and this money. With that, we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through with our Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and gladly sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly, are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true pastoral lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, we praise him, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And grant that these gifts of bread and wine 
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thank you. 
Those on my right will come this way, and those on my left will come this way. So we we'll have two persons, two sets of persons offering communion. Him number 177, low in the grave.
Above all. Above all. Powers. Above all.
for the notices. There are some who may want to come for special prayers. Let us do that now.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Rev. Welcome the church today. Welcome to church this morning, everyone. Our care service on Easter Day. Special welcome to the newly baptized. I'm going to ask those who can stand on their own for their parents to raise them high out of the frontier so that the congregation will be able to see our new members. Anoya Imani Graham. Yes, I have them too. Sakina Lewis. Charlene Thompson. I know you won't come out, but just stand. She's from Leeds. And Ingrid Bell. She's at the back. We had two more persons who were baptized yesterday. One came to us from Siloa. She's on her way to the United States as we speak now. She got her journey in blessings and her baptism yesterday before she went. And the next one is from Leeds, but she's not with us this morning. So our church is growing in baptized members, Reverend Taylor. Amen. 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 I have to sing out the family this morning. It's Mr. and Mrs. Billy Graham. Stand for me, Mr. and Mrs. Billy Graham. That's Amaya's parents. Special welcome for you coming out of the United States. One went back yesterday and you are here with us. Good. Our roll call now. I'm going to start with a guest to the cure. And I'm going to ask you to stand. St. Albans Stanmore, they're visiting with us. St. Andrew Gilner, and St. Andrew Gilner. St. Stephen's name. Church of the Transfiguration Leeds. Church of the Holy Spirit Pepper. And the Post Church St. Matthew Santa Cruz. Please stand, St. Matthew Santa Cruz. I missed that. Sorry, I and they're here. St. James Mount Hermann. Thanks for renting. But I didn't see us standing like the St. Matthew stand as a host church. But we are, we are indeed happy to have you all here. It was a blessed service, and I know we have been blessed going into the rest of this week. At this time, I am going to invite Reverend Robin Samuda. He would like to speak to all of us as a peer. Come reverence him. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I would like to inform us that my resignation from the regular service of the church is now in effect. Consequently, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the cure for her support and the cooperation over these years. 
I'd like to ask us to remember of my family in your prayers as I will do the same for you. I beg you to continue to give your full support to Reverend Tilda, who's in charge, to Reverend Teddy, and to Reverend Boken. My home church will continue to be St. Anne's Church, Vienna. I would like to express congratulations to these persons who have brought their children to be baptized today. I don't know the names of parents, but I especially know Mr. and Mrs. Billy Graham, and I wish to congratulate them both for this decision to take the children to become a part of the body of Christ. And then finally, friends, I wish to express for us all the Easter blessings. May God continue to bless us and that we will have a peaceful and holy Easter. Thanks again. Continuing on the notices, the persons representing the cure at Synod will go off with Reverend Hilda. This week, we pray for their traveling mercies as they head out from their homes to Synod. Brothers and sisters, from the entire cure, the Mother's Union of St. Matthew's, Santa Cruz, is inviting you to the church hall for refreshment right after the closing hymn and the prayer. Do have a blessed week, everyone. Thank you. The session hymn. We are building a people of power. Follow the screen as we see.
Alleluia. Let us go now in peace and love to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.